startup author of Money, A Love Story, and part of the launch of this puppy is that I am interviewing some of my friends and the people I love about their money love story. Because money is such a taboo topic, I wanted to have these conversations in public in a loving, conscious way to inspire more people to pay loving attention to their money. So I'm here with my friend Nitika Chopra, and she is a talk show host, and her show, Naturally Beautiful, yep, I'm like, as I said that, I thought, that's the right name. And uh, it premieres on September 24th on the Varia Living channel, and I'm really excited for you because when I met Nitika, her dream was to be a talk show host, and that was only a few years ago, no, and you did it. I did it. It's so awesome, and she's also the founder of the online magazine, yourbellalife.com, and it's really beautiful and Aww. super inspiring, and you are beautiful and inspiring. Thanks. You're welcome. And you're one of our contributors, so oh, yeah. it's amazing, because all of our beauties get her knowledge all the time. All so the up. money, love. <laughs> um, so I want to know, starting off, mm -hmm. what did you learn, witness, and experience when it came to money growing up? It was interesting in my household because I learned kind of two worlds of money. Mm -hmm. So my mom's family is super extravagant. They're like the traditional Indian family or the typical Indian family that you would see in like a Bollywood movie. Okay. You know, jewelry and lovely expensive things and just like they love to really like live life. That's uh -huh. part of the Punjabi culture, which is the kind of Indian that I am. So um, there's that side, and then there's my dad's side, which is so simple. My mm -hmm. grandparents were really involved with the temple close by where they lived in India, and they were very, very simple. They didn't really care about worldly things mm -hmm. as much. It was just like what they needed, yeah. you know? So I kind of came from both worlds, and it was a good thing because I really got to enjoy life, yeah. but at the same time, I didn't get spoiled. And I think that that was a huge thing. Uh huh. Yeah, like I always got what I needed. I, you know, dealt with a lot of health stuff growing up, so I always yeah. had was really well taken care mm -hmm. of. And for school and things like that, I always felt really well taken care of. But it wasn't like my parents were handing me a credit card at the age of sixteen and saying, "Go shop at the mall." They were not doing that. Got it. So yeah. So you had that full spectrum sort I of did. Uh, taken and not taken care of, but um, you know, exhibited to you yeah. in your childhood. And then when you, I know that you had, you know, a challenging time with yes. health issues in your early 20s mm -hmm. and some stuff that came up. And yeah. then as you were, and you feel free to share that story because it's sure. pretty compelling. Um, <laughs> we'll get into that. Now sure. I guess you have to because yeah, I okay. talked about it. Um, so, but in, in, if you could share it in the lens of what was it like dealing with those challenges as you were coming of age, Yes. as you were... Moving towards independence mm -hmm. and co going out on your own, living in New York City, I mean, that's a pretty bold move. Yeah. Um, I mean, I did it as well and got myself into tons of debt. So <laughs> I'm wondering. I did that too. <laughs> okay. So, so what, what was that like for you? How, yeah. did, how did the spectrum of what you learned about money growing up affect you as you were moving into independence? Sure. Well, that's a great question. It's actually, it's really interesting because even though I had these two worlds that I was, you know, shown on a daily basis... I, the, the challenges that Kate is referring to, uh, yeah. I, when I was about 10 years old, I got psoriasis, but it was really debilitating, and it was really from the tip of my foot to the tip of my head, and I also ended up getting a psoriatic arthritis when I was 19, and you know, wow. couldn't do things like open cereal when I was in my dorm room, and I couldn't open the door, mm -hmm. I couldn't walk down the stairs, I was just in severe pain. So the interesting thing about this is that my family was healthy with money. But my personal relationship became one of that I am helpless. And this uh -huh. was a huge part of my journey with money because, you know, getting sick when you're 10, my main association with people was I'm sick, I need you to take care of me. Yeah. It was not one of I'm strong, I have all these activities that I'm involved in, I'm, you know, the captain of this or the president of this right. in school or whatever it is. It was really about me being sick. So I actually also, in the mix of all that, got married when I was about 20 years old and got divorced when I was 24. And I think the helplessness really rang throughout my story mm -hmm. until I got divorced. Okay. And when I got divorced, the truth hit the fan, <laughs> really. Um, it was just insane. My parents were living in Hong Kong. Oh. And, um, I flew to Hong Kong after I got divorced, and I was like, Mom, I have such and such alimony money, and I have no idea what to do with it. I had never paid my own bills before. I had never done anything before. Yeah. 
And down to the fact that when I finally had to get my own job and I was doing better with my health and all that stuff, I literally cried to my boss, who actually ended up hiring me. I don't really know what she was thinking, but it was you fine. You cried in the interview? I cried. I cried like the first week. Amazing. Okay, it was yeah, it was amazing. It was amazing. <laughs> it's typical me. I'm trying to be authentic at all times, and I cried because I was in real estate, and she told me that you had to make ten thousand dollars gross sales uh -huh. in real estate, which I live in Manhattan. That's like four one bedrooms. Yeah. Good, right? Yeah. I cried because I it was felt like, like so much. I have never even made a thousand dollars before, and uh -huh. I wasn't walking like a year ago. So yeah. how do you expect me to do this? It was so stressful. But I went on. I went on to you know win a broker's contest where I rented the most wow. apartments in all of Manhattan, and you know won twenty five thousand so dollars. And that. it was amazing. Tell me about that because that's really yeah. interesting. Like going from being overwhelmed even to about, about making ten thousand dollars. <laughs> I was overwhelmed about making a thousand dollars. You're making a thousand to yeah. winning a broker's contest. Yeah. And, and I mean that's a pretty like what happened in between. What did you learn about yourself or what was that transformation? I think it was really taking the concept of manifestation, which I'm sure you talk about a lot, and mm -hmm. you know, but not just keeping it in my head. And that's the trick with manifestation. I think people talk a lot about, you know, oh, I'm just gonna think about getting checks in the mail and then I'm gonna get checks in the mail. I don't know what movie I might be quoting, but that is not, that is not the way that it works. Uh -huh. That's just not the way that it works. So I actually just looked at the reality of my situation, which I know you talk about Good for a lot. You. Yeah. And I was like, okay, well, I need to pay rent and I need to eat, and I now have no alimony to fall back on. Uh -huh. So it really went from having this reality check and really understanding what the truth of the finances were, what I actually needed to bring in. Mm -hmm. And then this contest like came across my desk and I called my mom and I was like, I'm gonna win this contest. Of course, at this time, I didn't even rent an apartment yet for like two months. I hadn't even rented apartments I and I won that. it. It was just, a, I know, it's so bizarre even when I say it out loud. It's great. But I just believed in myself. I just really believed in myself and I think the worthiness conversation mm -hmm. which you talk about so much is was a huge part of it. I yeah. think I finally was just like I don't care what past conversations I've been having. I am worthy of like eating dinner and paying my rent yeah. and all of that. So Wow. Yeah. Now, um feel free to say as much or as little as you sure. want about this, but this yeah. question just came to me and I'm just Please. curious. How has your relationship with your body and your physical health adjusted as you have become more independent and as you've begun to wire in that self-worth? You know, that's a really interesting question for me because um, I have, I always have tremendous compassion for people who, you know, have arthritis especially Absolutely. or just anything with your bones because you live in such a state of fear. And mm -hmm. I remember being at my sickest and, you know, going down the stairs. I would literally pray the entire time I was walking down the stairs because I was so terrified. And so now that I'm healthy and my skin looks amazing and my bones are hurting, <laughs> I can say that. And my mouth um, is naturally beautiful. Right. <laughs> That's a side note. But yes, like I am I'm actually healthy. Yeah. Um, I had to really retrain myself. Yeah. It was not, it's kind of like how people talk a lot about, you know, someone, let's say, who's really struggling with weight their whole lives, and then finally they lose whatever weight they wanted to l lose, they still have to accept oh, yeah. this new body. Yep. So it was a lot of that. It was like, okay, I'm healthy now, but I've been sick for like 15 years at that right. point. I don't know myself so as a really healthy person. you really redefine who you are. I really did. I had That's to get to work on very, that. Very, very cool. Yeah. Because I think, you know, our, our physical health and our financial health can mm -hmm. be very intertwined because they... You know, I won't really dive so deep into that, but there's just like a lot of overlaps for yes. what happens in our lives based on how we feel about ourselves. That's not news to you. No, Might I, be news I to love you, it. I don't know. Might be. Um, I love that. No, I think it's so important. Yeah. I really do because it's. I feel like everything, every area of life, whether it's in romantic relationships, whether it's about our health, whether it's about money, it really does come down to self worth. Yes. And so once Always. that is really worked on and really embraced and all of those things, then like you're gonna be loaded with a hot man and also look fabulous. Just saying. And what else is there really? <laughs> and feel great on the inside. Um, I mean, and maybe those are your dreams, but I'm just saying. Yeah, but they you know. might be yours. They're yeah. certainly some of mine. So that's great. <laughs> now what for you as you're moving forward, you know, you just got your talk show, which yeah. is a really big deal, a dream manifested. What's the next frontier for you when it comes to money and worth and the conversation around that? I think a lot of it for me is still 
understanding that I can create this, like this financial abundance on my own. So with the talk show, it was amazing. And I, I know that I manifested it because I've been praying like crazy <laughs> and also taking fierce action for at least four years straight. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, it was like someone else was giving me a check. It was mm -hmm. like I was getting hired by a company. It wasn't like I you know, got a production company and I did, did it all on my own, okay. which I'm okay with. Um, but I think that there's another level. And okay. so now I'm trying with YourBellaLife.com to really just buckle down on some of the events that we're doing mm -hmm. and just take things to the next level where I am actually believing that I'm worthy enough to create it from the ground up. Like I don't need someone to tell me that I'm worthy. I can actually just go out there and claim it. So that's, that's amazing. Yeah, that's my, I, I knew you'd be proud I of that. Totally. <laughs> I totally, I applaud you, I cheer you on, and I will support you. That's thank so you. beautiful. Thank you so much, and thank you for sharing your story. If you want to know more about Nitika, please watch her show on September 24th, and you can go to yourbellalife.com. And if you are into this conversation around money and self-worth, then you should get this book. You should totally get it. Money, it's a love story. <laughs> and uh, when you go to moneyalovestory.com, You'll find out about the course, A Course in Having Enough, that I'm co-teaching with Marianne Williamson, Barbara Stanny, and Amanda Steinberg, founder of DailyWorth.com, which you get for free when you buy the book. So it's a two-hour course with those amazing ladies and myself, and you get it for free. Your money, no, that's, wow, moneyalovestory.com. <laughs> so thank you so much for coming. I, I think you all would be crazy not to buy the book. Your life will change when you actually read this. I think thank it's you. true. I really do. Thank I believe you. in all you do. I so appreciate it. Thank You're you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye.